This video is to show how to use MDX to design an eye brace steel girder bridge. The example has 120 volt simple span bridge and the bridge total width 87. And here is the framing plan, total width 87 feet with 10 girder lines at nine foot facing and three feet overhand. And for this, this example, the maximum shipping length is 70 feet. And this number is to use to determine the splice location. And we also provide a cross frame every 20 feet. Deck thickness is eight inches. The load on the bridge, we consider the wearing surface HVP deck overlay 36 pounds per square foot. The permanent steel deck form is eight pounds per square foot. And we also have the utilities, five pounds per square foot. The bridge has a median four feet wide and nine feet in, nine inches thick. And the concrete barrier on both sides, the width is one and a half feet and the weight is 450 pounds per linear foot each side. The live load on the bridge, we consider HL93 live load and New York State DOT permit truck. The material used for steel girder is grade 50 steel and the cross frame is A36 steel. So now we open the MDX software. This is the interface of MDX. So now open, a, a, do a new project. And first you need to set up a folder, a file name. I will call this 120 FOD simple span. Steel gutter. And this window pop up, we will select the gutter system rating. And for this option, we will preliminary select a gutter size and let the program read and get a rating number. And if the rating number greater than one, we have to um, adjust the gutter size in order to make it work. The project description is 120 feet, simple span. I played a steel girder bridge. Unit English, and we'll use RRFT design. The options is plate girder. And now we take a look at the mode. Currently we are in the layout mode and then check the define tab. Now you have the layout is active. Click layout. The girder geometry parallel. Number of girders. This example has 10 girder lines. Same spacing between gutters. Gutter spacing is nine. Number of spans, one. Span length, 120. This bridge is a stock now, so no skill angle, just 90 degree. Intermediate cross frame is collinear. So number of intermediate braces along girder one, according to what we have here, every 20 feet, we will have five intermediate cross frames. 
And the first one is 20 feet from the bearing. So every spacing is 20 feet. This is a straight bridge, so there's no radius. Concrete strength, that's refer to the deck concrete, 4.5. Concrete unit for dead load calculation, we use 150. Overhand width, three at each side. The deck thickness is uniform. The deck thickness for this example is eight inches. The integral wearing thickness for this one is zero because this bridge used HBP deck overlay. Okay, so just save your model frequently. So now you define the layout, go to the generate this tab and generate gutter system layout. Okay, so now you see the generated gutter layout, the plan view. So in this plan view, you can check the location of cross frame as well as the girder lines. You can also see the input file. So now go back to the mode. The rating mode is active after you generate the layout. Click this rating mode and then go to define. And you will see the define, there's a multiple things become active. So the first one is slab. We already input the concrete properties, overhang, slab thickness. So we will check the effective slab width. And that's basically the composite gutter effective, effective slab width. The interior is just the gutter spacing and the exterior gutter is half a spacing plus overhand. So everything looks, looks good. So now we take a look at the slab hunch. So we will define the slab hunches. The hunch set width to top flange width. And the hunch thickness not include top flange. Uniform for all gutters. And here we just input one inch because here we use the hunch thickness to calculate the composite gutter stiffness. And we want to be conservative and we will introdu introduce additional hunt thickness in the loading part. We don't specify the, the deck rebar here, so just leave it empty and do accept. And go back to define. After you check everything for slab, now go to the gutters, define the gutters. We will define all gutters, plate gutter, and the web splice locations. We will use the same web splice locations for all gutters. There will be two splices for each gutter. So now I want to show you the splice location that we want to do. And according to the maximum shipping length, 
and we will do the splice location at 25 feet and then make another section 70 feet, stretch the maximum shipping length. The remaining is 25 feet for the third segment. So if you want to take a look, Here is the splice location that we preliminary designed. So the first one bearing to splice one is 25 feet and splice one to two, 70 feet. We don't define the bolted connection. And the girder steel is uniform for all girders. We will specify the girder steel by grade and select the steel type from this list. According to the given information, we will use M27050 steel. The web depths, and for a typical eye plate girder design, we usually keep the web depths uniform along the entire girders. The web thick, the web depths for our girders based on our preliminary design, the sizing, and we will use 50 inches for the depths and a half inch for the web. So if you want to take a look at how to do the preliminary sizing of the girder, and we do have this covered in the class to show how to sizing the hybrid girder. According to the span lens, first we determine the web depths using the span lens over 30. After that, we will determine the thickness of the web based on the local buckling requirement Use D over 150, that's the minimum thickness. But typical girders web thickness is from half inch to one inch. So after that, we will determine the, the flange thickness just based on the requirement of 1.1 times the web thickness. The typical flange thickness is from one inch to two and a half inches. So after that, we will determine the flange width. The flange width is bounded by one sixth of the depth of the web and 24 times of the flange thickness. So based on those requirements, we will get a preliminary size of the gutter and put into MDX and get a rating number. Then we, we will adjust the flange width based on the bending requirement and adjust the web thickness according to the shear force requirement until the entire girder size meet all those strength requirements as well as the deflection requirement for live load. So uniform web depths is 50 for preliminary design. And thickness for our girders, we use the same thickness, put one half inch. And for flange splice locations, we have the same flange splice locations for all the girders. There are two splices. 25 for the first segment and 70 for the second segment. Bottom flange splice, also two splices at the same location. The top flange was, and usually for design, the top flange was we first try to keep 
the top flange was same along the entire girder. So we will try this option first. And for a top flange was in a preliminary design, we have 12 inches right here. And for the top flange thickness, we do change the thickness based on the demand. At splice location, there's a chance for us to save some material. And for the end piece, because of the, the moment demand is lower, we can use a smaller or thinner slab or thinner flange. And for the middle part, which has a higher moment demand and we will use a thicker. So as a preliminary design, we will do one inch at the side and one and a half inch in the middle. So this top flange thickness very along the girders. We will choose this same flange thickness by the top flange sections for all girders. So for all the girder design, we use exactly the same um, design for top flange. Section one is one inch. Section two, we put 1.5 and section three is one inch. The bottom flange was First, we will set the bottom flange was same along all girders. And according to our preliminary design, we have the bottom flange was 14 inches. And usually the bottom flange is two inches wider than the top flange. So the uniform bottom flange is 14. And for thickness, again, at a splice allow us to change the thickness. So we will use one and a half at a, at a two end. And we use two inches thickness in the middle portion. The two and the one point five, and usually the bottom flange is a half inch thicker than the top flange. For the bearing stiffeners, and we will use the same number of stiffeners per support for all gutters, and we will use for bearing stiffeners also called the jacking stiffeners. And usually we use two of the stiffeners. And we will use the same spacing between the two barrel stiffeners for our gutters. And we put six inches here. And for the barrel stiffeners width, and we'll use exactly the same, the barrel stiffeners width for our gutters. And if we want to take a look at bearing stiffeners, and here is something example. So we'll put the bearing stiffeners with seven and a half. Seven and a half. Okay. According to our example, the preliminary size of barrel stiffener is seven and a half by one and a half inch. Uniform bearing stiffener thickness for our gutters, we put one and a half.
the Baron Stephen Connors clip, and we'll use the same horizontal lens of Connors slip for our girders. And this one, we put 1.5 for the corner slip. I can show you an example. It's right here. The clip. And this is a larger version of that, showing that one and a half inch typical. Stiffener steel, we use uniform stiffener steel for our girders. And stiffener steel for by grade. And for stiffener, we will use the same 50 steel. Intermediate transverse web stiffeners. We have those stiffeners to attach to the cross frame. So at location of intermediate cross frame, the location we also have those stiffeners act as the stiffeners as well as the gusset plate to attach the cross frame. And for girder one, only one side. So again, those trans transverse web stiffeners is used as a gusset plate to attach the cross frame. And for girder one, only one side on the interior girder side to attach cross frame. And girder two, two sides. All those interior girders have two sides. Girder 10 is exterior girder, only has one side. Number of intermediate transverse web stiffener location along girder one, that's exactly the same location as cross frame. So there are five of those. So now we need to input the location of the stiffeners and pay attention to here is inches instead of feet. So we need to change the 20 feet to 240 inches. So every 20 feet, we have a cross frame. That's the location for the intermediate stiffeners. Girder two also have five. Same thing. 240 inches, that's the spacing of 20 feet for the cross frame. We will keep doing that for all the girders. So it's a little bit tedious process here. We have to input all 10 girders for the intermediate stiffeners.
So gutter eight, so five, do the same input, 240 inches. That's the spacing of cross frames. The last one. Okay. So now we'll select the, the intermediate transverse web stiffener steel type. So the width, okay, the width is same seven and a half and uniform stiffener thickness we put a half inch here just just based on our preliminary selection of the intermediate stiffener size The stiffener is connected to the tension flange. And as you see here for typical connections, and those stiffeners do um, occupy the entire depth of the girder. So it's connected to the tension flange. There's no gap, no longitudinal web stiffeners for this example, okay. Save your file frequently. Okay, so now we will see the define. We get the gutter input down and go to the bracing. And for the bracing steel, we use A36. We will do um, the bracing groups according to the example. And we will do all those um, cross frame, the same shape as top cord, bottom cord, and those diagonals meet at top cord. So this is the preliminary size. We just do one group and specify the bracing by type. So according to the shape, we will do the top and the bottom cords, the diagonal to the center of the top. So this is the configuration that we preliminary selected as this. So we will try the our members the same shape. And we will do for the preliminary size is angle six by six by one half. So from the angle list, we will choose six by six by one half. And the height of bracing for group one, so we need to take a look at um, what is the total height for, for this cross frame. According to the, the girder web, depth 50 inches, and we need to subtract three inches from the top, three inches from bottom. And this allows some of those bolted connection or welded connection of the cross frames. So I would say 50 minus three minus three, you get 44 as a start.
and bracing connection distance from girder web from group one. And this one is the distance from center line of the girder to the connection point. I will put four and a half, which is from center line of the girder to the center line of a both group of the cross frame connection. The total bearing, the, the total transverse stiffener width is seven and a half. So I just use that minus three inches. So I already defined the, the bracing. And now go to the loading. Non-composite that load. We apply the self-weight. That is the girder self-weight and the slab self-weight. And the steel weight in addition to the web flange and the bracing members. We will do the, the steel deck form using the specified uniform load by girder. And for girder one, there's some of the load calculations, for example, and steel weight in addition to the self weight, we have a steel deck form of interior girder using the eight pound per square foot times the girder spacing and get 0 0.072 keep per linear foot. And for the exterior girder, we get 0 0.03 0 0.036 keep per linear foot. Tributary slab, slab width for self weight and uniform. And that is the effective flange width for exterior girder that's 90 inches, including the overhang and a half of the girder spacing. Girder two interior girder, that's the nine foot, which is 108 inches. Just double check of those. So everything looks look good. And a concrete weight in addition to the tributary slab width times thickness plus haunch. And we will specify the uniform load by girders. And for the concrete weight, we will do a three inches haunch and using 0.15 keep per cubic foot times three inches times the top flange was and get 0 0.0375 keep per linear foot. This is on each good line.
no concentrate load. Composite that load, that's the median and the barrier. So the input for the composite DC, we have the median four feet wide and nine inches thick and a got 0.45. And concrete barrier is 0.45, keep a linear foot each side and times two side get 0.9. And we add them together, divided by the total 10 girders. Each girder line will take 0.135 k per linear foot, and we will input that into MDX. The composite DC is based on the number of girders. Various surface. Various surface include the HPP deck overlay and the utilities. We'll apply the load uniformly to all girders. Varying surface load applied to each girder line. And according to our calculation right here, we have a DW 36 plus five equals 41 pound per square foot and times the total width 87 and divide by 10 girder lines. So each girder will see 0.3567 keep per linear foot. We put this number here. Truck definition for live load will use design truck plus the permit truck option. The tandem truck definition, HL93. Number of axles on the permit truck. We will use the New York DOT permit truck. According to configuration, we have 11 axles. And the first axle is 10. Then we have two 18s, three 23s, and five 21. Just put each axle load here. Then we put axle spacing. And according to the configuration, and we have the first axle to the second axle is nine foot. Then we have four spaces of four feet. Then 10 feet, another four spaces of four feet. So we have a nine foot for the first one and then four fours. After that, 10 four spacing and four fours. Just cover the permit truck spacing. 
Wheel spacing for the front wheel or back wheel is six foot. That's standard. The lane layout, define lanes. Number of loaded lanes based on our calculation should be seven. So the calculation is right here. We will choose no unloaded lanes representing medians. So in the design, we will consider future widening. And it's possible that in the future, those medians will be removed to accommodate more vehicles. Lane width, 12 feet. We will have the uniform roadway width. Road widths perpendicular to the girders is 84. That is the total width minus the barrier width. Right curb distance from girder one is uniform. And right curb distance from girder one Negative outside girder, inside girder is positive, and we have negative 1.5, and that dimension is from inside face of the curb to the center line of the girder and outside the girder. That's negative. Float lanes between girder between curbs, no sidewalk. So now we defined the loading already. So everything have is a check mark. So we input everything already. And now you can generate analysis rating. And before I do that, I will save my model again. Then I will do the analysis rating. Take a little bit of time. So after you click this, generate the an analysis and rating, and now you have those girder system as well as each girder, and you can see those analysis output. And uh, instead of checking the girder system, I would like to see one typical exterior girder and one typical interior girder and see what is the rating output. So let's first take a look at the girder one, that's exterior girder rating output. And we'll check some of those important ratings. The first one is bottom flange factored bending stresses. And this rating is for strength one and strength two loading. And we will take a look at this ratio. The bottom flange is in tension. And we notice that all those ratio, the maximum, the maximum is 0.863 in the middle, which at 60 feet, that's the middle of the span. And this rating number less than one means that the capacity greater than the load demand. 
And here you can see the what is the maximum stresses and 50 KSI, that is the steel capacity or steel tensile strength. So the rating number shows that our design, the current bottom flanges design works pretty well. Not over designed. That's the strength one HL93 live load. Let's take a look at the New York DOT permit vehicle and the maximum ratio also at the center of the span. And we have 0.863. So that works too. At the splices, at the splices, we have 0 0.704 for the first segment. And we have 0 0.709 for the third segment. So those 25 feet segment, the rating, the rating number is around 0 0.7. Now that's also reasonable. So when we do the design, if we see the maximum rating ratio is ranging from 0.7 to 0.9, it means that your design is very reasonable. Now let's take a look at the top flange. Top flange factors bending stress. We do find that for the top flange, stress one, the maximum rating ratio is 0.747. And at splices, the maximum is 0.6. And for strength two, top flange, the maximum ratio is 0.75, and at splices is 0.607. So according to that, according to, to the rating, rating number, and we do find the strength two governs the top flange and the rating number is around 0.75. And if you want to sharpen your pencil and increase this number, means that you can make your top flange a little bit thinner. So for example, you back to define and gutters. Top flange thickness defined for uh, all gutters. So we can make this thinner, 1.25. So now go back to this generate, do analysis rating. You can see those rating number changed. And now we have the maximum rating ratio for strength one represents the standard truck. Now the rating number in the middle increased to 0.82. And strength two, the permit vehicle, 0.82. So now we feel that 
the design as pretty reasonable and more economical. So we will keep the top flange 1.25 inches for the middle portion. Okay, so now we take a look at girder two. Also for the top flange and the bottom flange. So girder two is a typical interior girder. And we will check the maximum rating number 0 0.84, 0 0.784. And this one is 0 0.701. Okay, and let's take a look at the bottom flange. Point seven eight four and point seven oh one. Okay, so means that this design is good for an interior girder. So I will double check other girders, just make sure those work. And go to three. So go to three also works. So we, by this point, we will keep the exterior girder and interior girder design the same, and we will keep the current design. And now we will check the shear strength. Go back to the girder one, exterior girder. And we will take a look at what is the, the ratio for the maximum performance ratio, that one. So we will choose that and take a look at the shear as 0.917 per meter vehicle, 0.917, okay? So those means less than one, the shear works. And take a look at girder two, the maximum performance ratio, 0.905, for the HL93 truck and permit truck is 0 0.823. Check girder three and girder four. Just to make sure that for maximum performance ratio, every girder less than one. And in design, 0 0.7 to 0 0.9, that range is the comfortable range for design. So at this point, we feel that the shear also works pretty well. And we'll keep the 50 inches by half inch web design the same. And now the last thing we will check the bracing. We will check each of those summary performance ratio and make sure those ratio no greater than one for HL93 as well as for the permit vehicle. So after that, we find that the ratio is like the 0.8, the maximum 0.85 in that range. So it means that it's pretty good for the bracing design. And now we make sure the strength design works for the entire bridge. And if you find the ratio, the bottom cord or, or top cord is exceed the one, we have to increase 
those member size in order to reduce the performance ratio. And now let's take a look at um, the deflections. And we also need to uh, check the live load deflection to make sure that the live load deflection no greater than the span length over 800. And now let's take a look at the deflection of a typical exterior We will use the deflection from live load, okay, that option. And this show the live load deflection and we will use the limit of span length over 800. So now you take a look um, at our calculation. The limit according to the span length 120 feet and the maximum allowed deflection for live load is 1.8 inches. And we need to make sure that our maximum live load deflection no greater than this limit 1.8. So now back to this plot. And for greater one, we do find that this maximum It's around like 1.5 to 1.6, that range. And for gutter two, it's around like 1.4 inches. Gutter three, it's 1.2 something. Okay, so we check every gutter and find the maximum deflection due to the live load, no greater than 1.8 inches. So our design works. If you find live load deflection is ex exceed the maximum 1.8 inches, and you will change the overall web depth to make the gutter deeper to increase the moment inertia to reduce the live load deflection. So now everything work and our design is pretty good. Now you have this entire, the girder geometry um, and so on. So now you do have this design. Summary. The girder geometry. Some deflection summary. So you can find all of those input file and analysis output just from um, the analysis and the rating window, okay, done with this example.